don't talk politics. Yes, yes, Kelly. Of our members. You gotta remember that. So. Did you see? Actually, the Trump one has a nine club member. Right? It's true. They have a job opening. Membership coordinator. I was thinking about moving. You know what, Virginia one? Uh, they should really bring that fun. Yes. Um, Steffi. Yeah. She does the writing at RBD. Yeah. And they just got uh, listed as one of the band's most popular Yeah. Super good ones. Yeah. Um, is she still there? I think she is. Well, she was there. We were at the Nantucket White House. I don't want to start a rumor, but she's back. Oh, really? Tom's job, actually. Oh. Maybe we will. You really moved to Honor? Oh, you got Is that not true? Oh, Hope doesn't know? <laughs> Tom's moving to the band down by the river. Well, that was our intro song. Okay. Are we intro song? Are we are we live, Tom? Oh yeah, you've been live. Oh, we've been live. Yeah. Hi everyone. <laughs> Welcome. Uh, it's been a minute. Yeah. Since our last uh, tasting, when was that? Three weeks ago. Three weeks ago. A month ago. Time flies by. Time flies by. We wanted to introduce you to uh, the Talking Heads. Um, this must be the place, or introduce this episode to that. Mm hmm. Um. Because obviously you are faithful members, and we're faithful to you, and uh, it's all about um, place and time and making great wine. And you've obviously already figured it out. Um, we make great wines, and um, we are able to do that because of you. So thank you so much. Mm -hmm. um, and so this must be the place. This um, must be the place. Wow. Yeah. Really poetic, yeah. symbolic song. Well, mostly Carrie and I just like that song. That's a good song. Yeah, it's a good song. And I, you know, it's. Great song, actually. I think that Talking Heads, Speaking Tongues is probably like one of the most complete albums of all times. Um, but, um, all right. There we go. Well, that said, we have so much wine. Um, we have a lot of wine. It's gone out um, to all of you in your club shipments, and if you're not, if you're not, in, if you're not a member yet, um, you should be. Good. This isn't enticing. I don't know. Yeah, because um, there's a there's a bevy, a quiver, a a gaggle of uh, great wines on the table, and they're all wines that are, it, there's different memberships, mm -hmm. um, and people get different wines. So um, if it's confusing that we have so many different wines open on the table, um, not all of you got all of these wines. Um, different. Yes, yeah, so I want to explain that first. So we have our Winemaker Society's official wine club, and if you like red wines, we only send you red wines. If you like white wines, we throw in our Josephine. So if you don't get Josephine, mm -hmm. you get Bon Vivant. Uh, and if you're a cabinet Ooh, collector, really, you get one or the other, but not both. Well, if you don't want, sometimes we rotate. Yeah, okay. you don't oh. want if you're a red only member and you don't want Josephine, you get a red substitution. It's sometimes wow. uh, Bobby Bob, sometimes it's something else. And but I could sign that. up for a red only club and a mixed club that gets Josephine, and I get both best of both worlds. You could do two memberships. I like that. And get a case each time, or you could also cool. get a case each time as a cabernet collector. You get a bottle, or sorry, a case of, this shipment was a case of 22 Black Label. Ooh, In the spring, it's a six and six of um, our single vineyards. So if you're a collector, that's, you know, that's that's a great club for you. I'm not here to push the club because. Uh, it's already uh, full. It's Actually, already full. We had it closed down. It's locked <laughs> out. And um, so if you want to get in the club, you can get on the list to get in the club. Yeah, um, okay. Tom's square going behind the camera because Tom is in charge. That's not true. I Actually, there's a whole bunch of wineries that play that game, and uh, Turnbull, okay. we never do that. So, um, it, you know, it's we're not the, the, those cool kids that you got to get on the list to get on the list to know the person no. that gets on the list. I think um, it's pretty honest if we say we make our wine for our members. Yeah. I mean, without you guys, this is we so can't do it. Yeah. So, so I don't know. I just I just totally chugged my um, small pour. Um, it's way too small of the uh, 19 Josephine. And mm -hmm. it was fantastic. Um, too many places to start. It's only white wine on the table. Mm -hmm. um, and um, oh, the the uh, the zestiness and the freshness, but also the textural intrigue and the, the finishing power of that wine. Um, really special. I, yeah. I know in at my house, um, we've been enjoying um, more during the, this this wonderful year, and um, um, we're fortunate to do so. But um, Josephine would be a lovely way to start an evening, and yeah. then any of these other 
fine fellows would be a great way to uh, do you want to quickly go through and just yeah, let's go through. say what each bottle is yes I'll, go? I'll go so this is our 2019 Josephine Sauvignon Lock we got our 2017 Bon Vivant uh, Red Blend we got our 2017 Oakville Reserve let's see this is our 2016 Aminas Cap 2016 Fortuna, Fortuna 2016 Leo I'm assuming that's the 16 Black Label 17 Black Label and our 18 black label. If you're if you're a cavern collector, the black labels are fun because it's the black label. <laughs> they all look the same. Um, the back label will tell you what vintage you have. So if you yes. if you're confused about that, there's a vintage on the back. So label. we you know as a team kind of work together to pick the wines that we think are showing the best. Uh, we want to save for our members. Uh, and you almost first all look. First yeah, look. It's a first look. Um, so if you receive this shipment, you've kind of got a great first look. We did officially re release the 16 single vineyard wines, but a lot of these wines have not yet been officially released. Um, and it's kind of a nice way to see, I mean, doing this is a nice way to see how they're tasting now because they're even different than when we tasted them. Yeah. When do we do the tasting notes for these? In like July, June? Um, yeah, we tend to, um, Carrie's um, done a great job trying to get me a little bit more organized about um, when to do tasting notes. I tend to think that I bottle the wines and then they um, they're safely um, tucked away in the vault until we release them. Um, and Carrie's um, and Tom and the whole team have been working out. And Megan, our awesome clip coordinator, mm -hmm. it's her birthday today. Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, Megan! Megan. Place wouldn't be the same without you. Um, so um, so exciting. Oh, I hope that wasn't one of your secret passwords, Megan. That was your, that's awkward. Um, <laughs> but um, yeah, so it's a whole team event. But mm -hmm. um, we work together to try to figure out when to write the tasting notes, and we mm -hmm. tend to like write those. Um, with a little bit of time um, so that we can make all that cool uh, packaging that comes with your membership um, mm -hmm. and the little cards and all the tasting notes yeah. and all that stuff. Carrie works super hard on that with the whole team. And um, so we'll write the tasting notes up, uh, at release. And now right. it's fun to go back and, and uh, revisit some of these ones. They're and still I, very useful. Yeah, and opening is why you obviously have to just taste to make sure, you know, nothing, nothing's up with them. I mean, some of them have really changed in the last few months and, better of course. I mean they're yeah. really really tasty. Yeah, it's great. So how do we want to do this? We've got um I mean assuming everyone's watching, I'm assuming not everyone's got their entire line of open like we yeah. do. <laughs> if oh. you do, good on you. I mean Carrie had kind of a good plan and we thought we'd like taste the uh, Josephine and then the Bon Bon and the Reserve. And then we do a set of the Vineyard Desmonts and then we'll do a black label three pack um, to get us through the 16, 17, 18 black label. Yeah. I think okay. it's, a, it's a, you know, it's one way to carve the thing up. Um, we, um, Carrie and uh, the tasting room team, um, pulled the bottles, decanted everything, um, did a beautiful job getting everything ready to go. And um, I popped in and have tasted through them already um, to try to see if that, if I'm cool with that tasting order. I think it's fine. They're all awesome. So when you have, um, fantastic wine after fantastic wine. Um, they play nice together. You know, if you mm -hmm. had you had some uh, straggler, then you might try to, to organize them in some way that that would highlight or um, unhighlight those deficiencies. But everything's so darn good that it's ridiculous. But I think that um, just I'll give you a quick uh, taste on the Josephine for those of you who have that one open, and um, and we'll check that out. This guy is uh, fun. It's a hundred percent Sauvignon Blanc, and it was fermented. I'm gonna look at my teleprompter here. Um, it was uh, fermented 52% um, in, in unlined concrete tanks. 19% um, of it came from the awesome clay amphoras from the Minetti family in Italy, in Tuscany. Um, and 29% uh, was in well-seasoned French oak barrels. And those different pieces come together. And now this wine is a wine. We've actually, the 2020 Josephine is resting in the amphora, in the concrete tank. In, in the uh, in the season barrels and uh, is looking great. There's some exciting pieces there, and um, you know we'll, we'll we'll probably be able to tease out an awesome white label. That's a secret code word for those of you that know um, mm -hmm. for 2020 also. Um, and it looks stellar. So I'm, I've been working on the 2020. So it's really fun to get to go and see the 2019. And um, in my head, I've got the 2020 um, spinning around. And um, let's see if, back if, we're, if we're if we're on track. Um, Carrie's gone ready wine, red wine, so um, I'm gonna taste alone. Um, <laughs> Carrie, go ahead and drink. So I'm just like, not, um, like just you know, there's, there's quite a few wines. But, um, I just taste myself. Great um, um, freshness and focus in the nose with um, 
I would say there's honeysuckle and uh, honeydew melon. There's uh, Meyer lemon zest and some grapefruit tones. And then no, it's all it all um, totally delivers all that right to the palate. It has this quelching, uh, which is where like your your salivary glands want to want to pump, and it, it feels exciting. So I, I I guess I think that 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 um, that acidic aspect in a very good way um, that makes your mouth alive and freshened um, and ready to to take another sip hungrily. That's really important for Sauvignon Blanc, that intention of how the wine tastes in the mouth. So um, and then the, the finish is crisp and light, um, but persistent at the same time. So it has surprising flavor density deep in the finish, even though it's crisp and light, which mm -hmm. is the magic of Josephine. So I think that that's it's a really exciting wine. Um, and, um, it, you know, it um, it engages and excites. So yeah. I think that it's amazing. It's, it's holding up great, but um, we do have a 2020 coming down the pike in, we'll release that, we'll bottle that in late January, early February, okay. and we will release that in March, March or April. April yeah. So, um, you know, it, there is, um, there's still um, time, I think, to, to stockpile some Josephine, and this would go, this is just a great, it's a great area of drinker, um, but it's also yeah. um, totally perfect for the holiday table. Yeah, so. well, we'll get into that. Um, yeah. Want to do a little pitch at the end? Do you have a pitch? Or we can get to that. Yeah, and it's nice to look at as club members. As members know that we we pulled the bottle with the slightly um, imperfect capsule for this tasting. Um, so we got the special one right there. It's like a golden ticket. <laughs> and then we've got the um, 2017. Everything's hand bottled, right? So there are imperfections. It's part of the magic. Mm -hmm. We're not machines. Um, and then we've got the 17 Bon Vivant. Don't mind if I do. <laughs> and um, and the spoiler alert here, um, in tasting through the whole set of wines, this is actually my this favorite is, think, of the whole set. Yeah. And so a lot of you might not be familiar with the Bon Vivant, but it's the, the, the silent uh, slayer of the set. Um, just totally gorgeous. Yeah, it's fun. Wow. Really easy yeah. to drink. A lot of... Too easy. No sense thing. I, I, I don't know. I think this would be like my go-to bottle. If um, So if you haven't opened, if you're like waiting to get the results of this tasting, to pull a bottle out of your cellar and open it, um, my preference would be that thing singing right now. Um, I'd open yeah. up the, if you have a 16 or a 17 bottle lot, I think you'd be very pleased um, and your evening will go So Peter, what's in the 2017 bottle? Well, uh, let me look at my cheat sheet. Um, <laughs> I'm working on the 2019 and, and um, blends and, and we just finished uh, tucking the awesome 2020 vintage um, in a barrel. So um, the um, 2017 Bon Blanc, 61% Syrah and 39% Le Grain. Mm. Um, and so uh, Le Grain is a variety of Le Grain. What is that? Um, most of you have been out to the winery and you've probably heard the tale of the Le Grain, the mislabeled vineyard blocks and all this stuff. Um, but Le Grain comes from the Alta Adige, the um, grape growing region that's that's really beautiful, um, north of Venice, Italy, up in the Austrian Alps, um, and it, in Italy, the Italian side of the Austrian Alps, let's say, and it's um, it's uh, granite, granite stone soils and uh, cool climate, and the Le Grain that's grown there is quite different than the Le Grain that you grow in Oakville on, at the Leopoldina Vineyard mm -hmm. on the eastern side of the Napa Valley. So we get this dark, inky, fruited, um, uh, juicy fruit, and uh, in the Le Grains that you might buy from from uh, Alta Adige would be would look similar to our rosé. Mm -hmm. A little bit, they'd be darker than our rosé, but um, by by much, um, much by better. red wine standards from that valley, they're a very light weighted, twelve and a half percent on at tops um, alcohol mm -hmm. wine, and they're beautiful too. And I encourage you to go to your local wine shop um, and find some uh, Le Grain and see what it does in its native habitat. Um, but here in captivity in the Napa Valley, um, the Le Grain is, it's my favorite variety that we, that we farm. Um, mm -hmm. It's magic, pure magic in the cellar and I hoard every little barrel. Um, the little block makes four to six barrels a year and uh, we deploy the lion's share of them, the hard block of that into the bottle of wine. And, um, Occasionally, um, little bits of it will will be used in topping some of the other wines, mm. um, just because it's so darn good. Just it's a hard to, hard to avoid it. It's like that pixie dust that makes yeah. everything perfect. The magic pixie dust. Well, I think this wine is tasting great, and 
again, teasing holiday. This is mm. this wine is featured no. in quite no. a few of our uh, gift sets, which it? it's a good food wine. It's I mean, ridiculous. If you're this thinking go, about, I mean, this would kind of go great with life. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you, can have, you can have you you know if you're thinking for Thanksgiving, you're gonna not do the turkey, but you're gonna do a shishimi and mahi. Oh yeah. It's perfect. If okay. you're gonna do turkey, it's perfect for that too. I would say like anything, like gingerbread, any of those kind of holiday <laughs> baking spices. Pretty much anything. You anything. could be doing burritos from the local taco Pizza shop. And pizza. And it'd be great. Pizza. Yeah. Um, prime yeah. rim. Um, <laughs> bone in ham. Any food. Pretty much any kale salad. This is the winner. Um, cranberry salad. Yeah. Actually, this would go kind of great with cranberry sauce. So. It actually would go. Yeah. Mix it in with your cranberry I have never made cranberry no. sauce before. Because you mix in the... <laughs> I, know, I, know I thought that comes right. with, my mom will be insulted, but I hear it comes with a can, and when you extrude oh, it, 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 no, it's important, it's important to then mash that up so that nobody can tell it came out of the can. Oh, no, no, we just, we slice it, and oh, that's really? what you yeah. get, that's uh, how we do my family, but jelly. In my family, we actually, we make the ham homemade in the I mean, that was the royal we, I've never done it. Well, I'm wondering if it's one of those things like sauce where you could throw in some splash mm. of wine and it would be great. Probably it, not. It would, it would undoubtedly nice. make whatever you put it in excellent, but you should just drink it all. Just drink it with your yeah. Thanksgiving meals, what we're trying to say. Um, mm. yeah, that's a great wine. Insanity. Mm -hmm. um, and then we've got 17 Oakville Reserve. I toyed with, with pouring this one over with the black label. Oh, Carrie's going to join me now. <laughs> uh, that's good, thank you. Okay, we've got 17 Oakville Reserve. And... Um, this one is, um, I don't know, I, it's fantastic. Um, our tasting room manager, Joseph, and I were um, agreeing and, and air fist bumping um, the 17 Oak Gold Reserve as a clear value winner in the set. Um, just incredible. Um, the, the detailed fresh fruit, the focus, the aromatic lift, um, has this great floral, Floor aromatics that like draw you in. So like some of the most want, the, you know when a wine's ready to drink when when you when you smell the glass and it makes you want to dive into the glass, mm -hmm. that's a that's a complete win. And so this wine is doing that above all the rest. But the Bon Bon is doing that too. But um, as we get into the more serious cabernets, let's say the single vineyards here from 2016, I swear my hand is clean. I didn't. Uh, it's not changing oil. It's it's stained with wine. And then the black labels um, have. Um, Intent. It's not gangrene. Um, I'm, not, I'm not pulling a Mitch McConnell or anything like that. Um, so the um, Tom's um, blanching over there. Um, the um, these these bottles are more powerful, and they're 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 such babies. Uh, but if yeah. you've got if you've got a bottle that you haven't if you didn't open the the Bon Bon, then the Oco Reserve would be an excellent choice. Um, and this guy, the, those floral aromatics, the red fruit, like crushed. Fresh red fruit mm -hmm. and um, and flower petals are just like coming up. Yeah. And there's a kind of like a, a forest spice or like flowers of the rocks kind of uh, appeal to the thing. And um, the the this is 71% um, from Leopoldina, 20% um, from Fortuna, and 9% from the Turnbull Home Vineyard here at the winery. And then it's 94% Cab. 5% Cap Franc, and I think that's a lot of the aromatic lift, mm. and then 1% Malbec, which is helping counterbalance the freshness and aromatic lift of the Cap Franc. This, so this is an unusual Oco Reserve, in that Oco Reserve is normally built around the, Le the, the Fortuna Vineyard, mm -hmm. and here this one is um, is largely built from the Leopoldina Vineyard, and that is an artifact of the 2017 vintage. Now, it was such a challenging vintage. Um, and we had, um, there was a, a tremendous heat in the middle of the summer, mm -hmm. and then we had um, fires truncating the end of the season. We, we were fully picked by then, so the, the fires weren't really part of our story. But, um, and as you know, um, we had tremendous success with the 2017s. Um, I think the only um, 100 point wine in the Nam Valley. Mm -hmm. And that's not to say, um, that is to tell you that the vintage. Um, you know, you need to, to be serious about the vintage, but when you find somebody that's done such exceptional work, then those are the people for you and we're the people for you. Um, so the, um, the Oakville Reserve um, comes largely from the Leopoldino Vineyard in 17 because the fruit there was so, um, so exceptional. So the Black Label, the Piera, um, the uh, Leopoldino Cab, and the Oakville Reserve, all largely coming from the Leopoldino Vineyard. And um, that's an exciting thing. It's yeah. an exceptional vineyard. It's 800 feet in elevation, 
up on the Lico bench, um, overlooks the whole valley, and it's a special spot. Yeah. So this is the um, the smart money is right here. Yeah. This is. I mean, this is a very complex. I mean, given the value, it's with your member price, it's sixty eight. Sixty eight. What? Um, yeah. And this is a. This is. I mean, oftentimes we'll find this wine is reviewed against some of the more expensive Napa Valley cabs that go yeah. for three hundred, four hundred yeah. plus a bottle. So this okay. is definitely a, a winner. And um, let's get into the um, single vineyard. So we've got um, we've got the 16 Fortuna, uh, 16 Amenos, 16 Fortuna, and 16 Leopoldina. And um, I'm screwing up. Um, Tom had set up a perfect parabola of the bottles, so they all had a perfect angle with the camera, and I've completely destroyed that. <laughs> it's um, passive aggressiveness on my part. Um, <laughs> just, I mean, let's just call it what it is. Um, and so we've got um, the 16 Amenos. Carrie's doing her best to like keep up. Keep up. We don't it's have just a little. Your the pour bucket's right here holding yeah, the camera. Yeah, camera. the pour bucket is actually holding the camera. So. I actually take the time to join the one. Yeah. But, uh, so um, Carrie and I both have a little dollop of the sixteen. Cheers. <laughs> um, the sixteen. Um, this is the menace. menace. So um, and this this guy. So we're gonna taste all all three of these sixteens, and the menace is. Um, they're all they're all roughly 98% cab. The Menos is 98, the Leopoldina is 98, and the Fortuna is 97. Um, and then the uh, a Menos is buttressed with a, a dash of Franc and Malbec. Um, the Leopoldina is going to have a little bit of Petit Verdot, and the um, the Fortuna has Franc and Malbec. So the blend composition of the three wines is very similar. That that seemed to be like the magic uh, math for me in that year. Yeah. Um, and so these are. These are predominantly Cabernet Sauvignon, just little little um, dustings of, of Malbec and, and Cap Franc and Petit Verdot. But all from different terroir, mm -hmm. which I think is, that's the key here. That's the key. And the Fortuna is so beautiful. It's um, it's fruit dense. <laughs> I'm sorry, the Amenos. God, is that the Amenos, really? That is the It's incredible. It's really yeah. opened up. Um, so when we, um, when we opened the bottle, um, the aromatics were uh, really hard. Yeah. Um, I mean, and the, the decanting has been spectacular here. Um, that, here's a good example another, of like yeah. why you want to decant. Um, the um, that's incredible. Yeah. The um, oh, good for that the, like an hour good, ago. Yeah, good for the minutes. Yeah, that's. I mean, this is a hundred percent from Calistoga. Yeah. You get that kind of bing cherry. Yeah. The light just. But this is there's a delicate. Yeah, the, the, on that. opening the aromatics um, before decanting were like a. And uh, a velvet wrap fist, but still pretty pretty yeah. tasty. Um, and the wine had a, a downward motion for the, the mid palate. Um, and now, aromatically, it's completely confused me with the Fortuna because it does have so much lip. Tom, would you like to speak louder? Nope. Tom's doing something to the microphone. I think he's just trying to show off his action poses. We're, we've, we're designing an action figure for Tom. And one of the things he's going to have is a microphone. Um, it's going to come with two different microphones, a boom mic and a table top mic. It's going to be cool. It's kind of cool. Um, he's, he's, he's silently laughing. <laughs> he's hating on me a little bit right now. But, um, I have some feedback um, from, on the microphone. Oh, okay. so he's fixing the feedback in the microphone. I thought when he said he had feedback, he had... I have some feedback I from think, someone about the microphone. Uh, I thought he, uh, I thought Tom was saying he had some feedback to me that he was going to get to later, <laughs> like off camera. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. Probably that, we'll address with you. Probably that too. Um, and so the, um, anyway, the menace is, is crushing it. I mean, yeah, like Carrie Car um, was right on, spot on with the um, the cherry characteristic. That's mm -hmm. that's a kind of classic, a classic house soda. House soda. Yeah. Aromatically, um, there's red lift um, that's unusual for Calistoga that like mm -hmm. draws in, and um, there's a taut line that like kind of pulls you in the lines, which is cool. Yeah. Um, it's. And then um, such a marvelous and widening mid palette. It's expansive. Um, it's brighter than I would expect. Um, mm -hmm. And has kind of wings on the side, and then the finish is um, melodious and outward. Um, I would say it's either like laking out and going wide, or focusing like a laser beam. It's it's, it's really like marvelous and like rides up. It's mm -hmm. like a nice wave at the beach that like comes up. Yeah. 
um, gives you a nice ride and a good push. And then when it hits the shore, it uh, makes that great sound on the sand and um, is enjoyable. It doesn't get your towel wet. Um, so that's a that's a really that's a really I I have to say that's like one of the finest amenities that I've ever tasted. This um, is usually one of I mean of the single vineyards. Never easy to pick a favorite, but yeah. I often find that Canaris is usually wow. usually up there. Carrie, you did a great job with the sixteen amenos. Well, thanks. I think the decanting rule there was, well, was was pure genius. Well, you know, gotta make sure it's ready. Yeah, thank you. And then the um, the sixteen Fortuna um, here, the, basically the same um, blend as the amenos. This is all from our Fortuna All, all from the Fortuna Vineyard. It's and um, oh my God, it's so different. It's ridiculous. Yeah, I know. Um, the aromatics are, are more pointed. Um, it's a, it's more efficient at getting deep into your nasal passages. Mm -hmm. um, it seems more um, uh, acidic. You can smell the brightness of the fruit, let's say. Um, and it has um, where the the, um, the menos is showing more red cherries and red plums. Um, the fortuna is showing more boysenberry and raspberry tones in the nose. Mm. And then there's that classic fortuna black tea tan. Mm -hmm. um, so um, the wine enters, um, subducts into the mid palate. And then there's a straight like dimpled uh, textures that are dynamic. Mm -hmm. And there's um, like a uh, like a, a slide or a slight grit of um, white white pepper grinds mm -hmm. and um, and black tea that picks up. It's a it's a it's a more tannic wine than the Menos. Um, not tannin's not a bad word. No, it's um, it's a high quality tannin here that engages and um, pulls you through, kind of like a ripcord that mm -hmm. brings you to the finish. Um, and then it finishes um, narrower um, but more more dynamically than. The menace is like much more friendly and pleasant and rich and powerful, and the the Fortuna in comparison is a, mm -hmm. is a is a tight ride. It's thrilling. Yeah. Um, and then finishes with like fireworks at the end of the the splash slide. So. I like that. Yeah, it's that's a really cool wine. Um, I don't know. That's um, that's really evolved. They both. Massively evolved through the decanting, and um, mm -hmm. so hopefully, if you've opened those, you're um, experiencing them changing over time. Yeah. I, it is one of the marks of really great wine is you can experience it over hours right. and see different vignettes. So, yeah. um, I am going to since they're not a dumb pocket there, I'm just gonna like trottle over here. Mm -hmm. And um, we have a oh, Ooh, sorry, dumb pocket. <laughs> Do you have a, a cup or something? A oh, I've touched your glass, Carrie. Well, but I didn't like my hand, so we're good. Think we're okay. Yeah, and trust, um, trust you've been safe and we'll be. Yeah, we're being super safe. <laughs> <laughs> it turns out, as my Italian cousin would say, um, the surfaces aren't that important. It's about the aromatic environment. So, um, Tom says, don't talk about it. How is our ventilation in this room? It's excellent. We have excellent ventilation. Yeah. yeah. Um, and then we've got the um, 2016 Leopoldina Cabernet Sauvignon. This is another, another classic, yeah. classic Leo. Oh my God! Um, yeah, dark. To do um, all three of these side by side. That's really cool. So cool. Yeah, thanks for giving us an opportunity to open these up and check them out, um, and hopefully you're getting to enjoy some of these wines. Um, I would say this one has like a, a deep, resonant, um, powerful blue and dark fruit. So mm -hmm. it's like different. Like we were, where the menace was showing like cherries and plums. Um, the Fortuna was more raspberries and boysenberries. Mm -hmm. This guy's like dusted blackberries and uh, cassis. Mm -hmm. And yeah, um, so good. aromatically, they, they're different. Um, they've all pulled me into the glass, which is the, the hallmark of like why why we drink wine. Like, yeah. Um, I, wow, I, I want to experience that. Um, so they've all like pulled those hard levers um, so efficiently, but in very different ways. So really mm -hmm. cool. Um, this is why we bottle them separately. Um, why yeah. that we highlight the terroir of these different vineyards is they are very, very special vineyards that that do the work on their own. So as a winemaker, my job is to like get out of the way and let the exceptional fruit um, that, that that Turnbull farms um, do do all the heavy lifting. And yeah. that, that's evident here. Um, the, the blends are the same. The uh, vintage is the same. Um, they're all Cabernet Sauvignon. And they could... 
it couldn't be three more different looks at what, um, and they're all exceptional. There's not like, well, they're different because like one's lame and one's exceptional. They're all exceptional and they're all super different. So um, kind of a thrilling ride through those three wines. Do you mind if I go back? Uh, I have a question about SBs. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, and I know this is something we may have addressed. We had a white label tasting and salt block mm -hmm. tasting earlier, but hot tuna um, wants to know, are Turnbull SBs considered- The band hot tuna? I, it could be. Oh. Are Turnbull mm -hmm. SBs considered super Sauvignons? And if so, how will cellaring affect its development and how long to sell it? Uh, um, I, I guess I, 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 I like to think of um, Sauvignon Blanc as like a basket of raspberries. It's much like our, our rosé. So we make two different, we make three different Sauvignon Blancs, um, not always three, but um, sometimes. Um, there's one that's out in the world with a screw cap, um, the Trimble Sauvignon Blanc. It's a fantastic one. I buy it by the case. Um, mm -hmm. Super good. Um, crisp and light and fresh and cutting. Um, and there's the Josephine, which is more texture driven and um, juicy and has more flavor density and intrigue. Um, the Thinking Man's uh, Woman's uh, Sauvignon Blanc. Mm -hmm. And then the White Label um, is a is like a one or two barrel experimental um, draw of Sauvignon Blanc on, on bottled dirty on these um, in dark glass so that you don't notice how cloudy the thing is. Um, it's a little trick of the trade. Um, and um, a testament to our great um, consultants, uh, David and Catherine DeSanti, who are experts in making white wine, and they help um, craft that wine. Um, and so those three different Sauvignon Blancs are, are super different, um, and they will age differently. Um, the um, screw count, um, fresh and lean uh, mm -hmm. Sauvignon Blanc, I like it. The reason we put it in a screw cap is to preserve its freshness. Um, it, since it's in a screw cap, it will, that, that'll slow down the aging the wine by like a factor of three over a quart. So that wine will age very slow and you can enjoy a bottle of the screw cap Turnbull Sauvignon Blanc for maybe two or three years and have a very fresh and crisp appeal to it. The Josephine, which is cork finished, um, would age faster than the screw cap bottle because it's not a, it's not a total seal. There is oxygen infusing into the wine and, and vice versa. Um, and so the wine is going to mellow and smooth over time. Um, mellow and smooth aren't words that I typically think of as like something I want in my yes, Sauvignon Blanc. Yeah. So, I, but but I have opened some older bottles of Josephine. They go back, you know, three years, let's say, and they're exceptional. I don't know that they've gotten better, but they're equally as good. Yeah. Um, and they're an interesting like time capsule to like as a as the maker to like oh what were we doing with Josephine yeah, yeah, two or yeah. three years ago. As a, as a consumer of Sauvignon Blanc, I would say, like, buy your Sauvignon Blanc and then enjoy it within the year that you buy it. Mm -hmm. It's not something that you want to, like, stack away. If you're interested in, like, stacking away white wines for the long haul, then you want to look to, like, German Rieslings or Austrian Gruners or, you know, go go, go get um, um, wines from Benito or, or get some vintage champagne um, or even young champagnes that are worthy of aging. Um, and th those are wines with a higher acid level. Um, and um, in the case of champagne or sparkling wines, you're going to have the carbon dioxide too from the method Champenois method um, that are going to help those wines age. So yeah. um, I would say that the Trimble Sauvignon Blancs would have kind of a time date of maybe two, three years, and then you're going to be suffering for that choice. Um, the white label might be the exception to that, but I think everybody that that is that has seen a bottle of the white label probably. Yeah. Drank it already. So, and we make yeah. so few of them that they're probably, I don't, I don't even have one. So, yeah. Um, but on the topic of super Sauvignon, that's a term that I feel like Karen McNeil kind of yeah, invented. Yeah, she invented it. And it's her word. That's, that's, I mean, it's always nice when she considers us and yeah. among the, that group of uh, producers kind of leading the way for yeah. like kind of the new. I mean, it's, it's kind of interesting. We did host a Karen McNeil um, moderated and, um, curated panel of Super Sauvignons two years ago, and Josephine was part of that. Yeah. I think Josephine was at least, um, if not more than um, half the cost of any of the other wines on the table, um, and probably a quarter of many of them, um, which um, was kind of spectacular. That's kind of a statement in itself. Um, I, I'm the maker, so I have a house palette, but I also found it to be um, you know, one of the top wines in the set. Um, so it, it, it's worthy of that kind of um, notoriety, um, but st like still, the, the joy of it is, um, and I think Karen um, didn't agree with me about this, but I was like, it's it's like a bowl of daisies. Um, it's enjoyable, 
um, but enjoy it while it lasts. Mm -hmm. um, these, I don't, when I'm making the Josephine, I'm not thinking about something that's going to be great 10 years from now. It's great now. Okay, should we like pile it in these black labels? Sure. Tom, are there any questions in the meantime? Nope. All right. Okay, so we've got um, three pack of black labels. They all look the same from the front, so I'll spin them around so you can verify that indeed. We have 16, 17, and 18 black label. And um, Carrie and I are gonna jump right into the 16. And um, so 16 black label. Um, and let's see, um, 16 black label, 88% Cabernet Sauvignon, 7% Malbec, 3% Petit Verdot, 2% Cab Franc, 85% from Leopoldina, 15% from Fortuna. So that's a lot of math. Mm -hmm. and, and wine isn't a math equation. The numbers don't really mean anything, but I know that some of you um, like to know, um, are such fans that you follow these wines and you like to know exactly those details. And I think those, if you have any questions about those details or they're important to you, um, we can get you all that information. Um, the information, once I make the blends, it really doesn't matter what the math is to me. Um, even when I'm making the blend, it doesn't matter what the math is. Um, but um, that is apparently um, the um, supercomputer here at uh, Turnbull has declared this to be the case of the 2016 Black Label. Mm -hmm. um, and um, so here, I guess, looking at that in arrears, I would say, well, like the 7% Malbec and 3% Petit Verdot, that is 10% of this blend. And that, that's a power move. That's, um, that's infusing fruit density into the wine. Um, and the 2% Cap Franc would be uh, freshening and uh, aromatic lift and some herbs. And then the Cabernet is going to, of course, be the best Cabernet we have in cell. So, um, and then 85% Leopoldino Vineyard, 15% Fortuna. So this is, um, that's, a, that's a pretty standard, like, black label um, proportion, let's say. Mm -hmm. I, I got, I'm looking ahead, and I'm cheating. And the 17 black label goes more Leo, less Fortuna. But that's similar to, like, what we saw in the Oakville Reserve bottling, too. So. Right. Um, the 17 minutes being a little bit of an anomaly from what we typically do because it was a, it was a anomalous um, vintage, um, if that's a word. Um, so 16 black label. Um, it's dark and brooding, as I would expect black label to be. I mean, we call it black label for a reason. Um, it's um, powerful and potent. And, I mean, this it has this... Um, silent stalking darkness that totally draws you in. It's super cool. Um, I mean, for the new tasting notes, it's silent stalking darkness. Yeah. And you would think that like a, a dark cloud wouldn't be attractive. Mm -hmm. um, so this is But here it is. There's, um, this is like, it's like um, red and black cassis wrapped in a velvet bag and then dropped on your doorstep. I mean, it's, it's really, um, it, it, it's, it's easy to get to. And um, the... The mid palette here is spectacular and completely blows blows away what the aromatic intrigue is. I mean, yeah. aromatics are enough to get you there, but then once you're in it, you're like, wow, that's incredible. There's a there's a um, a roundness and a whiteness to the mid palette. This chocker box full of like um, red and black cassis. Mm -hmm. um, it's a treasure trove of power and density, and the wine eye beams out. I mean, this. Very different than the single vineyard wine from the same. We just tasted three single vineyard wines from the same vintage. Yeah. And we've got, I would say these guys represent the freshness yeah. of each of the vineyards. Yeah. And this one is the is Thor's hammer. And so. Um, this is a, yeah. this makes a statement. It, yeah. yeah this is it's ridiculous, actually. Yeah. Um, and I have to say, like, although I'm in love with the expression of the vineyards in these wines, and, and the black label is somewhat like Turnbull's take on the terroir, right? Like the vineyard wines are gonna show you what the terroir was, what the vineyard did, what the vintage did. And the black label, um, you know, we've got the terroir here of the Leopoldina and the Fortuna cab. So hypothetically, you could take the, the Leopoldina wine and the Fortuna wine and put them together in 85, 15 percentage. Um, and you do not have black label. Yeah, it'd be different. Yeah, it, it's, not. It, it's not even like it's it's silly. It's not even like anywhere in the same ballpark. And so the um, the black label is a 
testament to um, the power and density of Oakville. Yeah. It's, it's, that's a killer wine. Yeah. And on to the 17. Yeah, the 17. Um, of course, it's our proud baby. Um, this is the kid that goes off and wins the Nobel Prize. <laughs> and um, and you're like, wow, I never saw it coming. <laughs> but um, good for it. Um, and so the 17 Black Label, um, you know, of course, our, our, our latest 100-pointer with uh, Antonio uh, Galonio Rabinus. Um, thankful to him and his staff for um, finding the ones to be worthy of their our review and also um, allowing us to tell that story to new um, new people that might not already have discovered Trimble. Of course, all of you already know about how great the wines are, so the numbers don't mean anything. Um, but um, all the same, when you get, um, you know, if you're in the Cat Collector Society and you had the box of the 100 point 2017 Black Label dropped off before um, it was 100, before points. It was 100 yeah. points, um, you're the smart kid in the room, and, um, you know, and there's people. Uh, flipping this wine uh, on, on eBay for like four times what they bought it for. So, um, you know, they, um, that's a good, you know, like wine's not a very good investment unless you're like in drinking it. Um, but yeah. um, since Turnbull always over delivers, um, our promise to you is always that we would we would never bottle a wine that we wouldn't have on our own holiday table. Um, and so, um, and Yes, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you know, but like the idea really, um, and we hold it as a strong ethos. The why of why we do it is that we would we would never ever bottle a wine that we wouldn't um, present to our own most um, fervent family and friends, um, and declare what we you know if we bought it at retail, um, full full boat, um, not your member prices, um, not my nice employee prices. But um, we 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 were Joe nobody that that um, walked into the tasting room yeah. had never uh, heard of Trimble and bought a bottle of Black Label um, and you took it home um, to your spouse um, would they think that you were the smartest kid in the room and uh, the Trimble Black Label does that every time yeah yeah so um, or any of the ones um, so the 17 Black Label um, here it's 92% cab so a little bit more cab than the 16. Um, four percent franc, two percent Malbec, two percent Petit Verdot. So, and the, um, the Malbecs dropped five percent. Um, Petit Verdot is about the same, and the franc went up a little bit. Um, more cab. Um, Ninety-two percent Leo, eight percent Fortuna. Um, and here the the aromatics are more available. And so, that, like, um, excuse me, dark cloud of um, of uh, like a velvet coated bag of uh, cassis. Um, here, there's more like updrift. Um, the wine is um, coaxing you a little bit heavier. Mm -hmm. um, has it's I, I would say it's prettier in the nose, mm -hmm. um, but more acidic. Um, and it's um, they're equally intriguing, but in very different ways. And I think that the, the 16 vintage is a more masculine, powerful vintage that has power and density. Like a this is like Clydesdale, mm -hmm. um, okay. right? It's a powerful um, beast of a wine. Um, and the, the 17 is a little bit more like a Greyhound race. I mean, it's mm -hmm. like, it doesn't have the same, um, if there's any PETA members out there, I'm sorry for that. Um, but the, um, <laughs> but Tom? Animals taste PETA? great in PETAs. Are you a PETA? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know, should I share that? Reshare that joke? Because it was pretty funny. Tom just had a great joke. He said, animals taste great in PETAs. Um, and um, that's horrible. Um, as a past vegan, I have to take exception to that. <laughs> <Past> vegan. <laughs> but um, anyways, um, the um, 17 um, black label is, um, is is a little bit like less massive, mm -hmm. and it's it's a more um, it's more racy. Yeah. Yeah. It's beautiful wine. Um, it's fresher and slippier. I, I'd say right now I actually have to give it up to the 16 black label um, as being a better wine than the 17, the 100 mm -hmm. winer from 17. I feel like the 16 black label has power and density that keeps reverberating and powering yeah. and finishing with like bigger and bigger crescendos. And the 17 is like, has a nice red lift mm -hmm. um, and it holds its waist pretty nicely and up, upward. And then it, it has a pretty skinny waist to the mid palette and, and focus in the finish. It doesn't widen, widen that much. I mean, it's, it's a really beautiful wine. But it's much more beautiful. Tom's. Uh, I like picturing it. <laughs> yeah. It's a nice waist. Yeah. Hold it up. Tom. Tom's clowning my hand motions. I'm part Italian, buddy. 
Um, and so the um, actually on the way to school this morning, Elijah and I were like driving to school, and yeah. there was this woman like walking down the sidewalk by the school, and she was on a speakerphone or something, and she was talking to somebody, and her hand motions were almost like causing her to fall over. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of funny. She was like all over. It was, it was a lot. I wish I saw it. And it, it was like if you'd taken a TikTok video of that or something like that, it, you, yeah, you would have been like, viral. you could have been, you could have been huge. Oh, no. um, Do you have a preference? Uh, we have a question on your preference between 13 and 16 black label. Hmm. Oh, I mean, it's um, I mean, 13's not on the table. It'd be fun. Um, oh yeah, um, we got so much fun this morning. But the I'll um, some more. Yeah. We barely have any. Yeah, the um, you know, the thirteen was the magic unicorn finish, um, and so it's probably like an artifact in my mind. But I'm pretty convinced that the thirteens would like destroy um, everyone on this table. Mm. Tom, do we have any thirteen black label? I'm asking mostly just for a friend, so to myself. So thir thirteen <laughs> sold out, and it was. Wait, is that thirteen nine liter of Pira still available? Oh, I don't know if that's available. I don't think so. Thank God. No. Um, so oh, the 13 yeah. Black Label sold out, but we had our library. But then we released uh, a certain amount every year. So all we have, I think we literally have like four cases, which is less than we're supposed to have in our library. But is, is, is somebody who has no name? I like that Tom gave the name of the person named Hot Tuna. But this new question from. This was from Hot Tuna. What? Really? Yeah, the 13 okay. versus 16. Yeah. So. <laughs> We're gonna have to look into that. He's trying to keep this conversation rolling. We should well, thank, you, Tina. thank you, Thank um, you. I I guess I, the the sixteen's a, the sixteen is not the vintage that, that thirteen was, but thankfully um, the team at Turnbull, uh, um, the total team, um, we continue to get better and better at what we do, and it's possible that the sixteen, seventeen, and eighteen black labels are better than the thirteen. Um, thirteen was a great vineyard year. So there's years where the single vineyard wines um, overperform black label. I mean, 13 was certainly one of those years. And there's years that, um, because the it was it's like your um, the equalizer, um, all the knobs are turned all the way up in 13. And there's no, as a winemaker, there's nowhere to dial them. And black label and Oakville Reserve are made wines. I take pieces from different vineyards and different varieties, and I can I, I construct a orchestra. Right. And so if everything's already perfect, um, there's nowhere to go with that. Mm. And so in 13, the vineyard wines were the halo of ground. Um, whereas in 16, 16 wasn't a vineyard year. 16 is a solid vintage. Um, and so the 16 black label might very well be better than the 13 black label. But the 13 label in cab, let's say, is probably better than the 16 label in mm. cab. Um, because I, I think of, of 13 as being a great terroir year, and, okay. but um, everything was already pegged out, so there was nowhere to go as a winemaker. And 16, things were at like 85%, and so there was still room to like dial stuff in and, yeah. and make it better. I don't, that probably doesn't make sense, but it, you know, as members, you're you know, if you're coming out, let me know, and we'll barrel taste some stuff, and I'll try to fill you in on how it works. Yeah. Um, but I, I guess I think that. Um, Probably the 16 black label is better than the 13 mm -hmm. from that feature. Okay. But if you were asking me about 13 Leo or 13 Fortuna versus the 16s, I'd probably err on the side of the vintage. 13s also with such a perfect growing year. I mean, how many hundred point wines were that year published? It was like 40. Point it was an amazing year. I mean, we got our. Which is, is nice to have for us, but. When you think about the accomplishment of a 1700 versus a 1300. Yeah, I know when we got our latest um, 100 point wine in 17, um, you know, Tom yawned a little bit. I, he was not that impressed. And I, and I tried to impress upon him that it's like more difficult to do perfection in a difficult year than do perfection in a great year. I feel like we didn't celebrate enough today with the scores that we got, to, which we'll oh, wait, talk oh, about. 18 black label. The There's the segue. Label. There's a the segue. Um, I don't know if I, so we, you know, um, got the news today from um, Robert Parker's Wine Advocate, uh, their editor in chief, Lisa Prani Brown. She runs the Napa Tasting. Um, Thank you, Lisa. Lisa got our, our our 2018 reviews back very quickly. We usually don't hear back until end of December, beginning yeah. of January. I remember that was always like and there's just when I'm at home for a Christmas vacation, I'm writing up the you know great yeah. news. But we got the news. Today that we got our 18 vintage score, and the 2018 black label, which you know yawn yawn, 
98 plus points. No. It's okay. It's a maybe if, if 98 plus in uh, Wine Advocate is like 98.5. I mean that's 1.5 points away from perfect. Yeah. It's, it actually, we. Um, it's it, very exciting. I'm. I was very excited. Yeah, it's a tremendous re result for the wines. Thank you. Um, Thank uh, you, Wine Advocate, Advocate. And, and Lisa Friday Brown. The um, the nice thing is there's no. Um, you know, there's there's no telling about how great this vintage is. Um, it's a fantastic vintage. Yeah. And the um, the 18 black label is um, did very well in the scoring. Mm -hmm. um, of course, we're humbled by that, but it doesn't really impact or instruct what we do. Um, but it, it helps you when you have this wine and you take it over to your friend's house. It helps you um, instruct them about why the wine is important, and yeah. it can open up people's minds to taste what's really inside the bottle. So we love that yeah. aspect it's, of it. It's nice to be recognized. Yeah. I think we're all, when you work yeah. here, you're such a fan of the wine. Yeah. You work here and you love everyone here. Yeah. But and I it, mean, it's it yeah. validates to think all. <laughs> Pretty fantastic wine. Yeah. Um, the, um, and then the, the 2018 Pira equally scored 98 point, 98 plus. plus um, and the, um, the Fortuna. 97, uh, 97 points, right here. Yeah, so um, Cab, yeah, the whole bevy of scores. Rio, 95 plus. Yeah, so there's Vegas, a 94. Yeah, so a pack of great scores that are from the wine advocate for the wines, um, which means that we we you're you're smart again to continue your um, fandom with us, and we are appreciative. Um, we don't get to make the wines without you. The 18 um, black label, which Gary and I have in our glasses. Is uh, is very special and has really opened up. When we opened this up initially, it was very tight. So if you if you if you were the winemaker society, you have the 2018 black label on this. Cap collectors. Cap collectors. Thank you. Thank and um, if you've opened if you've if you've got a bottle of the 18 black label, and I think not very many people have this yet because it's pre-release. Mm -hmm. um, you'd have to be in our our cap collectors club to have this. Um, it's a pretty tight one, so you're gonna want to decant it and sit on it um, mm -hmm. and enjoy it. But um, with the proper decanting, um, it is really it's open really up. It's really open up since we opened it. And it's it's gorgeous. Okay. It has yeah. has already done. No, no, I was just checking when we opened it like an mm -hmm. hour and a half ago. Like it's mm -hmm. that's a good amount. That's a good yeah. It's exciting. It has um, kind of the dark fusion of the 16 vintage with the precision of the 17s. So you've got um, darker aromatics that um, I feel like I'm like Mike Pence with my head. You know, uh, uh, one of the viewers made it saying he got to get you a fly slaughter and just if you think about that. Oh, <laughs> <I> <laughs> They're gonna do memes with you. Yeah, that's perfect. <laughs> if we could be that famous. Um, thankfully, my hair is pretty white, but it's not as white. as why does my pencils? <laughs> so um, the um, the flies don't show up. He's got like three years on me. So. Does he? Does he? Is that it? Um, <laughs> gosh, it was that, your birthday that, on Monday. That does make me seem really old. Yeah. 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 That what year was it for you? It's pretty old. Um, it's Peter's birthday on Monday. So happy well, birthday, Peter. What? Are you trying to give away my passcode to everything in my life? <laughs> um, don't do the math. Um, yeah, old. Um, so the, the black label here, 18 black label. Aromatics are are drawing just as across the board. I think that's the maybe the magic of Turnbull is like make sure you're you're um, you know if you don't have good glasses the the Turnbull tasting room glass that uh, Carrie and I are using here is the Shot Sweet Soul. Or is it the Grand Bordeaux? Bordeaux. Oh, Bordeaux. Grand Cru. Yeah. The Bordeaux Grand Cru. It's a great glass. It's Twenty-seven ounce glass. You can yeah. get an entire bottle of wine. How would you know that, Carrie? It's weird. It's a good um, party trick. <laughs> yeah, you can pour an entire bottle of wine into the. Well, bottle is twenty-five ounces. So. Yeah. But um, it's great glass. If you can't find it at your local retailer or online, I'm sure Tom and his team will be happy to like send you a box. And or you that. can get pear and the new cheers set. With yeah, we do. We do um, six minimum when you order these glasses, just because shipping is expensive. Yeah. So we, it was, we, we have to be protected. They're we ship them in the box that the manufacturer gives us. Yeah, which is but, and, and but they're not. Uh, they're not as delicate as the Redells. Um, check us out. Titanium crystals. You can ovalize the rim. I did show this to. The shatters. <laughs> no, look at that. I showed this to a. a I had a forty-nine er like linebacker guy. His hands were like bigger than my head. Um, and I, I showed him this trick about how you can like ovalize the rim of the glass, and he took one hand and uh, crushed the glass into like dust. And I was worried about a lawsuit, um, but he, he, it didn't come at all. But um, <laughs> they are tough glasses. The stem, oh, we can't do it here properly. But um, oh, here, check this out. Um, it's an ad, it's called an ad glass, a glass ad. 
Um, check this out. The um, stem can be rot. Um, these are great glasses. You can throw them in the dishwasher. Um, you need a hand bathroom to keep that shine. Yeah. But um, they're they're fantastic glasses. And um, when you pour wine out of great glasses, the wines show better. So and one of and our gifts, our most popular gift set every year is our cheer set, which, which I keep teasing. It, I wanna, I wanna two, do two glasses, one glass. Two yeah. glasses. I'll, I'll get. I'll do. I'm okay. going to do a rundown. Uh, for we have a glasses. quick question that uh, Carrie. Somebody asked that they're not familiar with what the cab collectors membership. Okay, is. so the cab collectors. Um, it's a very small um, club that we have. Anyone can be part of it. Um, if you like to collect a large amount of wine every year, so a case in the fall and a case in the spring, so two cases of wine, that's our Cab Collectors Club. Um, cab Collectors get the upcoming release, uh, vintage release of Black Label in the fall, and a preview release of the upcoming single vineyards in the spring. They're so always a, technically a full year ahead. You're, yes, you're technically a full year ahead. You so get you, a case of each shipment. So you should have proper storage. You should have proper storage. Uh, I mean, with that, you get flat, free flat rate shipping on all your case orders. Um, it's definitely, if, if you like to buy lots of Turnbull and you want to secure those vintages ahead of time, and like Peter said, the lucky guys and, and gals who got the case of 2018, or sorry, 2017 Blackwood before it was rated. Yeah. I mean, you got the, the case. Or the 2018. Um, you're getting cases about a year ahead of when we actually released them. And they so, get double allocation. And you get them. double allocation. So we had, um, after the 17th vintage of Black Label was scored, we had to create an allocation because obviously people would like to buy lots of 17 Black Label. Uh, Winemaker Society, three bottles. Cap Collectors, six. So, um, you know, if, if it's something that you're interested in, you want to learn more about, um, you can talk to Tom, uh, Megan, our membership coordinator, Chick, whose birthday it is today. Uh, she's the one who takes care of all your shipping and your requests at Megan at TurnbullWines.com. They can kind of maybe help maybe transition you from Winemaker Society if you're a Winemaker's member to Cab Collectors. If you're not a member at all and want to be, become a Cab Collector, go for it. Um, you have, it's a very small, maybe you have 100 but people. The Cab Collectors wouldn't get the bond they want. They nope. wouldn't get the bond they want. But they only get three wines, so they have to order everything else. Yes. So if you if you like that variety that you get as a winemaker society member, that's great. Um, if you want to buy wine outside of your shipments, um, and you're cool with getting two cases a year, which I don't know, I go through lots of wine. Maybe it's just me. Maybe it's just the how many cases a year do you go through, Peter? Me? Yeah, at your house. Um, what, what, seven hundred bottles would be. You think seven hundred bottles? I think so. Wow, that's impressive. What sixty cases? A year? Yeah. Just, just something. We think about like holidays and. No. No. That's not. I, I wasn't back that's that. Personal consumption. That's personal consumption. Okay. Yeah. Like, we you know, might have to talk. They, I think. Uh, Betty Ford Clinics are have an opening for me in 2024. <laughs> okay. It's easy to get through a bottle a night. By yourself. By Jane. yourself. When you're a winemaker, I'm sure. This is going down a dark path. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I mean, you this good. So uh, the cab collectors, if you want to, we don't um, advertise it because obviously uh, we're a small production winery. If everyone was a cab collector, we actually wouldn't have enough wine. So it's kind of one of those that uh, if you ask, we'll, we'll happily talk to you about it. But it's something that, um, you know, it, it's if it's right for you, it's perfect. Um, so feel free to reach out to Tom, Tom at TurnbullWines.com or Megan, M-E-G-A-N at TurnbullWines.com. They can tell you more about that. So, cool. I mean, I think at this point we're at the hour. Do you want to roll into yeah, the holiday so stuff? Or, kind of a, well, yeah. the, the repurchase thing. Go oh, I'm, oh. I've, got all, I've got a whole, uh, whole page of notes. Nobody leave. I'm, I'm out. Here you go. She's got this. So, um, first and foremost, um, so if you're watching this as a member, you receive your wines, hopefully at this point, obviously if you live in really hot states, you know, your wines are mother hold. Uh, but if you like the wines that you tasted tonight and you'd like to order more, um, you'll get an email, at the, uh, email about this tomorrow, but um, we are going to be sending you guys a promo code for $1 ground shipping on any bottle, uh, any purchase of four bottles or more from your shipments. So if you really liked 
any of the wines and you want to buy stock up on Bon Vivant, uh, a single vineyard or your black label, if you buy four bottles or more of the wines from your shipment uh, with the code more Turnbull, that's all caps, one word, more Turnbull, you'll get $1 ground shipping. Uh, like I said, this will be in an email to you tomorrow. So if you forget, no worries. But with code more Turnbull, uh, when you're checking out, that'll leave you dollar ground shipping uh, on four uh, plus bottles, uh, reorders of the wines from your wine club shipment. Um, and then on another note, we holidays started for us. So we released our cheer set earlier this week. That is a it's our most popular gift set with a bottle of 2017 Oak Hill Reserve and two of the <laughs> wonderful glasses that Peter gave a great demonstration on. So if you want thermal glasses and some wine, that's a great set to a get, you know, oftentimes we'll get requests to, you know, purchase glasses. Like we said, it's not um, very, it's not easy to ship glass, uh, special, especially uh, crystal glasses across the country. So in the form of a cheer set where it's a, a foam float that kind of keeps those glasses safe, it's a great option. Um, we've got, oh gosh, we have eight total gift sets this year that we're promoting. Um, there are three right now up on the website more coming next week and more the next week after that. So we've got some um, kind of our classic kind of just wine focus sets. We have some specialty gift sets with them. Accoutrements, I won't go into much detail because you'll see more. Um, but I think this is probably our best lineup of gift sets to date. Um, it's a short window though. We've got um, Thanksgiving coming up and Christmas and um, the new year. Uh, shipping will be, you know, with COVID and uh, just, delays everywhere <laughs> we're seeing these days. Uh, ordering ahead of time is always best. Um, like I said, the website will always be up to date with what's available. Uh, we do shipping sell it. included. Shipping included is, uh, yes, all of our gift sets, grand shipping is included. Um, and if you'd like to uh, ship your wine via two-day air, we are offering $25 two-day air on all of your gift set purchases. So if you buy 20 gift sets, you're all getting those for $25 two-day air or free shipping. So um that's our holiday gift sets for you if you uh run a small business if you run a big business and you're looking for gifts for um your favorite vendors your colleagues your employees partners in trade um we do have a corporate gifting program uh tom is actually your guy to talk to the guy behind the camera uh so tom at trimblewines.com he will um, we can share the catalog with you that kind of focuses on those gift sets that we can produce in bulk um, and kind of offer those flat rate shipping uh, or shipping included deals um, that we can uh, you know, assemble in house with whatever gift note card that you need. Um, so that's our corporate gifting. What else am I missing, Tom? I think that's really everything. It's 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 a blur. I feel like this season, this holiday season, is it's it's already here. Um, so as you kind of start to think about entertaining or gifts for your hosts gifts for your own, your, yourself. Um, Trumbull's a great, a great destination for all things gifting. Uh, we really do have, I think, everything for anyone that loves wine on your list. So that said, Peter, what song are we, what know. is our outro? Did you pick something out? Um, well, we had some band, the band. Yeah, um, okay. there's, there's a bunch on there. We've got the band Last Waltz. <laughs> On vinyl. Um, how about just some, something random? I don't yeah, know. something random. A uh, little, little, uh, little shuffle. A shuffle. The. Who do you love? Sure. Because we love you, Trumbull <laughs> members. Thank you guys so much for tuning in. Um, if you have any questions, you can reach out to us. And um, <laughs> who is this? Thank you, you. Thank you guys. Oh, <laughs> 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 <laughs>